Hi everyone. Well, each morning I come down and my morning routine is to head over to the kitchen and get, make myself a cup of coffee and get a bowl of cereal. And then I am reminded that uh, humans don't live on bread alone, food alone, but on every word that comes from the mouth of the Lord. So I always make sure the night before that uh, my daily devotional material or my study material, my Bible and the family's Bibles are at hand because I know if they're not at hand, uh, my quiet time first thing in the morning is really not going to happen. So we've got a little basket uh, where the, the children's Bibles are kept, my Bible's kept and our devotionals are kept. Uh, so they're at hand uh, when we're uh, having our breakfast. At the moment, I'm going through uh, Glenn Scrivener's Daily Devotions. I've just started this and it's called Reading Between the Lines. Uh, I'm reading the New Testament Daily Devotions and uh, Tash has just started to read the Old Testament Daily Devotions. That's what we're doing at the moment. So here's how it goes. Just a short uh, Bible verse and a thought from Glenn. Uh, but he says, if you don't have time in the morning to read uh, just one page of this book, make sure you read more scripture than Scrivener. Uh, he's a great uh, rhyming uh, lyricist. Uh, but this is what he says uh, in this, uh, this morning's reading. It's about shining light from John 1, 19 to 28. Surely the adjective shining is redundant when attached to the word light. After all, what else does a light do? What can it do except shine? Surely there's no such thing as a light that doesn't shine. Well, well Jesus, as we'll soon see, speaks of people who put their light under a bushel. Christians are the light of the world, and yet many manage to be lights that do not shine. Not so with John the Baptist. He is described by Jesus as a shining light. John 5 verse 33 to 35 says, You have sent to John and he has testified to the truth. Not that I accept human testimony, but I mention it that you may be saved. John was a lamp that burned and gave light and burned, in, and, uh, burned a shining light. And you chose for a time to enjoy his light. So how did John shine? Was it through his talents? Well, yes, he was talented. Matthew 11 verse 11 calls John the most naturally talented of men. But that's not why he was a shining light. Was it because of his achievements? No, the very opposite. John shone by pointing away from himself entirely. In paintings which depict John, he is often identified by his pointing finger. But the finger does not point to him. He is the finger that points to another. And this was the secret of John's radiance. He pointed to Jesus. Jesus tells us the origin of John's brilliance. He has testified to the truth. John 1 really brings home the other centeredness of John the Baptist. There was a man sent from God whose name was John. He came as a witness to testify concerning that light so that through him all might believe. He himself was not the light. He came only as a witness to the light. The true light that gives light to everyone was coming into the world. Jesus is the uncreated light of the world. John shines as he points away from himself to the true light. John's light is not a light that draws attention to himself. Rather, his light spotlights the true light. John shows us all how we're meant to shine. We're all witnesses. Acts 1 verse 8 says that. But John is the ultimate human witness. And what do we learn from his example? We learn to point away from ourselves to Jesus. We shine the most when we forget ourselves and turn to the true light of the world. May John's self-appraisal be ours. Meditate on his self-understanding. And then Glenn gives some more scripture references. John 1 verse 19. I am not the Messiah, John the Baptist said. John 1 verse 23. I am the voice of one crying in the wilderness. Make straight the path for the Lord. John 1 27. I am not worthy to untie his sandal straps. John 3 30. He must become greater. I must become less. 
We're often told how important it is to have good self-esteem. John shows us more ancient and profound wisdom. He esteems someone else. But far from that diminishing his brilliance, it actually is actually the essence of his greatness. He shines by turning the spotlight where it belongs, onto Jesus. How will we shine today? Let's get out of the way and make much of the light of the world. Great thoughts to meditate on, great scriptures to take heart for, but also that would lead me to repent because I want the spotlight to be on me quite often. But actually true freedom and true joy comes by remembering John's example, by pointing the lights onto Jesus, who is the light of the world. So let's pray. Heavenly Father, thank you for the example of John the Baptist. Thank you that he became less as he pointed to Jesus and Jesus, the light of the world, shone brightly and therefore all who trust in him are asked to shine too. Heavenly Father, we are so sorry when we want to take centre stage and shine ourselves. Please forgive us and show us how today, in our conversations with people, in our work, in our family lives, in everything that we do, show us, prompt us by your Spirit to help us to be a light that shines for Jesus by pointing to Jesus. Father, help us think about these things throughout the day for your sake and for our good. Amen. I hope that helped. That's sort of something of the pattern I do. Just something short but really encouraging to get my mind focused on uh, the God that made me and the God that I live for, the God who saved me and the God I rejoice in. But yeah, just do a little bit each day. See you later.